What happens when the storms of life come? When you're whipped about by gale force winds of change? When the waves knock you about and nothing seems stable anymore? Everything is swaying around you. Nothing feels like solid ground. You're storm tossed, your world has been upset and you don't know what's happening. And what is the inevitable question that arises? Jesus, where are you? How could you let this happen to me? But are these the best questions to ask? These questions accuse Jesus and condemn us to our circumstances. What if we learned that a crisis is the best time to learn how anchored we are by His love? What if the storms that arose could teach us about how much peace is in us because He is in us? What if we could learn that difficult circumstances are the best place to learn what just a little seed of faith can do to move a mountain and quiet a storm? What if Jesus is still in the boat? What if we believed He didn't abandon us, but instead anchored us? Are we ready to see what big things He can do with our little faith? Could we learn to ask, Jesus, what is in this storm for us to learn? What can we do together here, now, that wasn't possible before the storm came? You cannot get miracles from an ordinary life, so it will take us seeing that Jesus is still in the boat and ready to move if we are going to see miracles around us. Wow, thank you so much, Hannah, for that encouraging word. And thank you so much, worship team, for ushering in the presence of God. There's such a sweet presence in this room, and I'm hoping and praying that there's a sweet presence of Jesus in that room where you're watching right now. My name is Dan Leanne. I'm an extended member uh, of this C3 NYC family, and it's my honor and privilege to bring a really simple word to you today. And it's my heart's hope, my heart's prayer that this word would be an encouragement. It would bring hope, it would bring peace, it would bring joy. And I'm really believing that if you would open up your heads and open up your hearts to what Jesus has got to say, you're going to experience literally the best thing you've experienced all week in this message and in this service. I'm going to be believing for hope to come into that room right now and for encouragement to rise in your heart right now as we talk about an experience we've all had at some point in our journey, the experience of journeying through a storm. We've all experienced storms, the storms that we see in life, the clouds gather, the storm brews, and then it hits, and our lives are shaken but there are different ways we experience God in these storms. There are times where we cry out to God and instantaneously He responds with a word, with an encouragement, with His powerful hand, with a provision. The storm settles down, creation is calmed, and we move on in life. Yet there are other times in this journey where we experience storms where God doesn't move quite as quickly or as powerfully as we would feel comfortable with. There are times where the storm brews and the clouds gather and then it hits and we cry out to God, but instead of Him moving right there in that instant, He goes a little bit quiet. It feels like someone's bumped the mute button in heaven. In fact, there are times where Jesus feels distinctly silent in the storm. And it's important for us, dare I say imperative for us as a faith community to wrestle with this question, where are you, Jesus, when it feels like you've gone silent in our storm? It's so important that we deal with silence in a healthy spiritual way because silence on the surface can be very distressing and disturbing. If you let silence play out to its natural end, it can actually become destructive to our faith. But here's the good news. Jesus doesn't want to see our faith destroyed, but our faith built up in and through every single season. That's the reason he gives us the word of God and the spirit of God to process through where he is when he feels silent in our storm. So just for a few minutes here this Sunday, we're going to talk about where is Jesus when it feels like he's gone silent in our storm. Let me pray and we'll jump into the word today. Lord Jesus, help. Amen. Where is Jesus when it feels like he's gone silent in our storm? 
I remember a couple of years ago, my wife and I experienced a storm where it felt like Jesus had gone incredibly quiet. The storm came in the form of our firstborn child, Caitlin. When she first came along, everything started off so well. She ate well and she slept well. She even smiled for photos. I thought to myself, man, I should give myself dad of the year award every year. I'm killing the game. But then something started happening after three months. They didn't stop happening for two years. At 9 p.m. and then again at 11 p.m. and then again at 1 a.m. Then again at 3 a.m. Then again at 5 a.m. My little baby girl would rise up out of her slumber, begin to cry. I'm not talking about cute baby tears that make you want to take a picture for all posterity. I'm talking about blood-curdling screams that make you want to throw holy water on her and see something flies out. And, and, and so my wife and I found ourselves on this couch in this living room, night after night, sleep-deprived, so discouraged, feeling so much despair. And we cried out to God, but it felt like He had gone quiet in our storm. I was doing everything right by the book. Like any good Christian soldier, the first thing I do is I turn towards prayer. I start praying to God, but it felt like my prayers were bouncing off the ceiling, silence in the storm. I thought if the prayers weren't going to do it, I'm going to bring the Word of God into this. So I got my Bible out in a concordance, and I found every single verse in the Bible with the word peace, silence, stillness, shut up. And I started speaking them over my baby girl, but night after night, still silence in the storm. I thought to myself, if the Word of God isn't going to sort this out, I'm going to bring out the big guns. I'm going to bring worship into this mix. So I pull out an old Darlene Czech worship album, and she's shouting unto the Lord, I'm really reading the Bible, I'm rubbing the Bible on her head, I'm praying these faith-filled prayers, but night after night, I found myself with my wife in the exact same spot, feeling so much discouragement, feeling like he was silent in our storm. I thought to myself, if Darlene can't sort this out, I'm going to pull out the really big guns. I'm bringing Joyce Meyer into this mug. So I turn on Christian TV. Joyce is preaching. Darlene's singing. I'm rubbing the Bible on her head. I'm praying these prayers. But still, no movement in this mountain. Silence in our storm. Now, because I'm a part of a faith community throughout this whole ordeal, uh, I have well-meaning um, parts of every single faith community will, will come forward with some level of, of, of advice. And, and, and this segment of the community I call, I call women. And they will come forward and they'll, they will give you advice on what to do. I had this beautiful old Asian lady come and tell me what I needed to do was to get some Chinese tea and boil it and pour it on my daughter's back. And what would happen is a black hair would grow out. I needed to shave it off and then my baby would go to sleep. So here I am in the middle of the night. I'm praying these prayers. I'm rubbing the Bible on her head. Darlene is singing. Joyce is preaching. The kettle is boiling because that's how you get when you find yourself in the middle of a storm and it feels like God's gone quiet. Before the Caucasian people watching right now get on their child-rearing high horses, there were some crazy Caucasian remedies too. I had this older lady come and tell me what I needed to do is get my baby and wrap her in a towel and put her on a washing machine and turn the washing machine on because the rocking motion would make her feel like she was in the womb again and she would go to sleep. So here I am in the middle of the night with my wife and a crying baby. I'm praying these prayers. I'm worshiping God. I'm watching Christian TV. I'm rubbing a Bible on her head. I'm boiling a kettle. My baby is on a washing machine, but still night after night in the same position, feeling like God was a million miles away, silent in my storm. Now, the reality is there are a lot of people watching right now who will never know the pain of sleep deprivation or feeling like you're failing as a parent. But I know there are people watching right now who know what it's like to feel like they're in the middle of a storm and Jesus has gone just a little bit quiet. It might be a financial storm. The last couple of months have really hit your finances hard. You're doing everything right by the book. You're claiming him as Jehovah Jireh, clap your provider. You're giving, you're sowing, you're tithing. But for some reason, it's not working now. And instead of going forward in your finances, you're going backwards and you're crying out to heaven, where are you in the middle of this storm? And it feels like in this situation, Jesus has gone quiet. It might be a family storm. Maybe the last couple of months of quarantine have really stretched your, your family unit and, and you haven't been getting along with your spouse or getting along with your children. And you might find yourself in your bedroom at night just crying out to God, would you do something? But instead of getting better, things are just getting worse in your household. And you're asking this question in the quiet of your soul, Jesus, where are you in the middle of my storm? 
How about these, these societal storms that we're going through at the moment? It feels like as a nation, we're going through such a disruption and there is so much pain and so much fear and so much frustration and so much division. And you, like me, may have fallen to your knees at different points in the last couple of months and cried out to God, hey, Jesus, would you move? Would you do something? Would you heal my brother? Would you open up the heart of my other brother? But it feels like no movement at all. Jesus feels, in fact, really quiet in the middle of this societal storm. Maybe it might be a health storm, that sickness, that ailment, that disease, that virus that that family member has gotten. And you know that he is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And you've heard these stories. You've seen the testimonies on the big screens of Jesus moving powerfully in people's bodies. But for some reason, instead of getting better, some people have passed away and you're asking this question. I know you're good and I know you're strong, but where's your goodness and your strength right now? Jesus, where are you in the middle of this storm? And silence is distressing. And silence is disturbing. And unfortunately for way too many people in the family of God, his apparent silence has been destructive over the last couple of months. But I'm here to remind you That is not God's plan for your life. And that's why he gives us the word of God. And that's the reason he gives us the spirit so that we would have a navigation tool to help us move forward when it feels like he's gone silent in our storm. So what I want to do just really quickly is have a look at a story in the Bible all about Jesus where it felt like he went quiet in his disciples' storm. And I want to make some observations and shape them into faith declarations that we can hold on to every day, not if, but when we go through these similar kinds of seasons. If you have your Bibles, would you go with me to the book of Mark chapter 4. For all the Australians in the room, Mark chapter 4. For all the Americans in the room, Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 verse 35 talks about a time when Jesus went a little bit silent in his disciples' storm. That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall or a massive storm came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. (sighs) The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and was completely calm. He says to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. I love this story because I see myself in this story. I'm just a friend of Jesus trying to get from point A through to point B and not drown along the way. And on this day, the disciples were told by Jesus to get into the boat to go to the other side. I want you to jot this down, that the disciples were smack bang, theoretically, in the middle of God's will. All right, here's a bonus, you know, kind of insight for you. That we have to break this paganistic thinking that says that when bad things are happening, somehow God is angry at us. No, Jesus will sometimes get us to get into a boat to go through rough waters because he has a bigger plan in store down the track. Sometimes bad stuff happens to good people, but this bad stuff will always turn around for God's glory and their good. And so here they are, they're going to the other side. A massive squall comes up, a furious storm brews up and the waves start crashing into the boat unrelentingly, nonstop, one thing after another. And the whole way through this episode, Jesus is asleep on a cushion. He is out. He's just in a deep state of N-R-E-M sleep. He is seemingly disconnected from his disciples' plight. The disciples asked the question that we've all asked before. Yo, Jesus, do you care if we drown? You see what we're going through? Are you going to step in? Our hands have no more strength. We'd love to see your strong hand right now. It feels like there's a lot of bad around us, God. How about injecting a little bit of good? 
the disciples asked the question we've all asked as well. Eventually, Jesus awakes, turns to the wind, turns to the waves, says, quiet, be still. Creation is calmed. Peace is restored. But more about that later. I want to know where was Jesus? No. I want to know where is Jesus when it feels like he's being silent in our storm. If you're writing down notes, you can pull out your leather-bound journals right now and pull out your pen. I'm not saying you have to take down notes to get into heaven. I'm just saying, why take a chance? The first thing I want you to write down simply is this. When trying to answer this question, where is Jesus when it feels like he's quiet in our storm? I want you to get this. Jesus is still in your boat. Come on, can you just say that out loud with me wherever you are? Jesus is still in your boat. He hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you. The one who promised to be with you to the very end of this age is keeping his promise this very moment. He is still in your boat. It says here in verse 35, taking him just as he was along with them in the boat. He didn't leave them. When the going got hot, he didn't get going. As the rain fell on the disciples, the rain was falling on Jesus. As the waves were tossing the disciples around, the waves were tossing Jesus around. If that boat capsized and the disciples would have to make a swim for shore, Jesus too would have capsized and would have to make a slim swim slash walk for shore because Jesus was still in the boat. That's what grabbed my heart. 24 years ago when I gave my life to Jesus. Every other world religion is about living a certain way, engaging in certain activities so that we can impress a God and one day he would take us away to be with him in heaven. But the reality of the gospel is the inverse, that instead of doing good things to get us out of this earth to be up with God in heaven, the gospel declares a good God who would send his son all the way into this earth to walk through the bad with me. Jesus was and Jesus still is in the boat. Doing it hard financially, he is still in your boat. Feels like World War III in your apartment right now, he is still in your boat. You don't know about your job security, he is still in your boat. You don't know if your health is gonna, he is still in your boat. He has not left you. He has not forsaken you. And the second thing I want you to get is not only is he still in your boat, he is still in control. He is still in control. I love how in the story, it says that as they're going through the storm, Jesus is in the stern sleeping on a cushion. He's out. And I can understand why some people will interpret that as nonchalance, as apathy. Jesus slept because he didn't care about what his disciples were going through, but nothing could be further from the truth. Jesus' care and concern was proven once and for all at Calvary. That's the reason the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, but God demonstrates his love for us in this. Whilst we're still sinners running in the other direction, Jesus died for us. A blood-stained cross proves once and for all that he loves you, that he cares for you. So we must conclude that if he slept, he didn't sleep because he didn't love his disciples. I would propose to you that he slept not because he didn't love his disciples, he slept because he wasn't stressed. Because he's alpha, he's omega, he's the beginning, he's the end. Colossians chapter one reminds us that he is the firstborn over all creation. That's just theological talk for he's the boss of this universe. Colossians chapter one reminds us that through whom everything was made, in whom everything is held together, he's literally the glue of this universe. He's got the whole world in his hands. He is in between every ion, every particle, every element. If you have a glass of water sitting on your table right now, he is right there between the H and the two and the O. He is the one who holds this universe together and he holds your life together right now. He is still in control. You're doing it tough, he is still in control. You're feeling frustrated, he is still in control. The future looks bleak, he is still in control. He has not slipped, he has not lost grip. And if the disciples had paid closer attention, they would have heard the outcome right at the beginning. 
Right at the beginning of the story, Jesus says, let us go over to the other side. He didn't say, hmm, today looks like a nice day to go out into the middle of a lake to drown. He said, no, we're getting to the other side. And maybe someone right now needs to receive that prophetically for their life. They're going to get to the other side. You're getting to the other side of lack. You're getting to the other side of fear. You're getting to the other side of depression. You're getting to the other side of anxiety. You are getting through to the other side because the same hands that flung stars into space are the same hands that hold your life together right now. You're getting to the other side. He is still in Control. He's in your boat. He's in control. And the third thing I need you to get, he is still going to move. The story isn't done yet. The final credits aren't rolling yet. He is still going to move. I love the way this story comes to a conclusion. The disciples wake him up. I would have loved to seen the conversation before someone woke up Jesus. They would have all been freaking out because at this point, they'd seen Jesus raise people from the dead again. They must have concluded he could do the reverse. So I wouldn't be able to try to be messing with the master when he's sleeping. So they're like kind of like just pushing each other, going, hey, we're going under this. This is terrible. We were raised in this Sea of Galilee. We've seen bad storms before, but this is the one taking us out. Someone needs to wake the master up. Hey, yo, Peter, you should say something to Jesus. And Peter says, no, nah, he called me the devil last week. I'm not trying to push it. Hey, hey, Thomas, you should say something. Oh, dad didn't listen to me. Hey, 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 Judas, you should say something. Nah, he always looks at me funny. I don't know what kind of conversation went on, but finally Jesus was awakened. He turns to the wind and he turns to the waves and he says, quiet, be still, and creation is calmed. My friends, don't allow a season of silence to rob you of the reality that our God is as strong as he has ever been. He looks at the most powerful force in nature and says, shush, and it was shushed. I just feel in my spirit, I need to take someone watching right now to Sunday school for 60 seconds and remind you on how big and how strong and how good our God is. Come on. He's the same God who created the heavens and the earth in six days and gave us one whole day to watch college football. Come on. He's the God of this universe who brought forth Abraham um, and, and the nation of Israel um, um, through, a, through a pensioner and a barren wife. Come on. This is the same God that split the Red Sea with nothing but a stick and a gust of wind. This is the same God who brought down the walls of Jericho with nothing but a song and a shout. This is the same God that fell the giant Goliath with nothing but a sling and a stone. This is the same God who closed the mouth of the lion, opened the eyes of the blind, healed the sick, raised the dead, birthed the church, saved my crazy life. This is the same God who's as powerful as He has ever been. And He will flex in His good time. And you will see His mind. And it will bring glory to His name and you'll smile because it, it would have brought good to your life. Don't allow a season of silence to rob you of the reality of how strong He is. But don't miss it. He's doing something good in the meantime. As He's preparing to move, don't miss it. He's shaping things in our life that couldn't be shaped in any other environment. Don't miss it. In all the shaking and all the stirring, there are some things that needed to crumble that couldn't be crumbled except for a season of silence like this. And we know this because at the end of this story, Jesus turns to the disciples and goes, hey, what's going on? Why are you guys so afraid? Do you still, do you still not have any faith? Or in other words, Jesus is saying, because I'm more interested in the faith that's developing and the men and women that you're becoming and the trust that is growing, I'm actually going to allow governed seasons of silence into your journey, knowing that things will grow in that season that couldn't grow in any other season. He is still going to move. But in the meantime, don't miss it. He's up to something good. I've had so many conversations over the last couple of months with saints and saintettes who have asked out loud the question we've all pondered within. 
Where are you, Jesus, in the midst of all of this? And with full faith and total assurance, I've been able to tell him, I know he's still in your boat. And I know that he's still in control. And I still know he's up to something good. Because everything he does is exactly that. I would love to finish this message with a really cool miracle breakthrough story. Kind of feels like a neat way to tie a bow on a message. I wish I could tell a really cool miracle story about how my baby girl finally got to sleep and me and my wife finally got some peace. I wish I could tell you that one night we were on a couch and my wife was crying and my baby was crying, but I wasn't crying because I was a manly man. Then all of a sudden a hand from heaven tore the ceiling open and then an angel came into my house and put a coal in my daughter's mouth and said, you will preach the gospel around the world. That's the reason you won't be quiet right now, but that didn't happen. My baby girl went to sleep because she got really, really tired. But fear not, my wife and I were smart enough to make another one, to pick up exactly where his sister left off. So there we found ourselves, about a year or so later, now a crying wife and a crying baby boy on that same black couch and I'm praying all the same prayers, but still, night after night, seemingly silent in the storm as Jesus was. But this time there was a difference. This time there was a knowing. This time there was a confidence. I remember one night, I looked at my wife, exhausted and exasperated. And I said, baby, are you going to be okay? And she said, honey, I'm going to be all right. Because Jesus is still in our boat. And I said, I know, babe, because I taught you that. That was a joke, and usually in a room, there's a lot of laughter, but everyone's like kind of just being quiet right now. But the reality is there are a lot of people who haven't laughed for a while, and this silence has been distressing, disturbing, and even destructive. And for you, I'd love to pray. So in a few moments' time, what I'd love to do is I would like to knit faith with anyone watching right now who's going, you know what, I'm in one of those seasons today. And I want to know Him still in my boat. I want to know Him still in control. I want to see Him do something good. I want to see Him flex. But before I knit faith with you, I would love to invite one kind of person who is watching right now to maybe pray a simple prayer inviting Jesus into their life. Because over the last 26 minutes, there are some people who are watching right now who are going, wow, I don't even know if Jesus is in my boat. And I wanna let you know, friend, that's all Christianity is. Christianity isn't about rules or regulations. It's not about jumping through religious hoops or clearing religious bars. It's about recognizing that God is love and He comes to find you exactly where you are. And if you would open up your heart to Him, He would take residence as your Lord and your Savior. And that will change everything about your life here and into eternity. So in the truest sense of the phrase, Christianity all begins with you inviting Jesus to be the captain of your boat. So if you're right now watching and going, you know what? Jesus isn't the leader of my life. And I would love to make Him that. Would you pray a simple prayer? I'll give you the words, but more importantly, recognize that heaven will hear these words. And as heaven hears these words, your life and your eternity changes. So right now, if you wanna make Jesus the leader of your boat, if you wanna invite him in, just say this out loud. Dear Jesus, I invite you into my life. I turn from steering the ship going my own way. And I ask you to take me where you would please. From now into eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, we would love to connect with you. We're pumped about your jump, but we are committed to your journey. So stay tuned and we want to give you the next few steps if you pray that prayer 
to begin this walk, mm, this sailing forward with Jesus through every season. For the rest of us, if you know what it's like right now to be in a storm, and if you'll be brave enough to admit that it feels like Jesus has gone just a little bit quiet, would you allow me just to knit faith with you and believe for breakthrough and for provision and for a miracle and every good thing. But before that, could we just believe together that we would feel Jesus like never before in our boat, in control, and still up to something good as He moves. And I'm believing that that faith declaration will rise up many times in the moments ahead as we remember exactly where Jesus is when he feels a little quiet in our storm. So if that's you right now and you've gone through or are going through a season of silence in a storm, just as an act of surrender, can you open up your hands where you are? If you're driving a car or holding a child, one hand is enough. But just open up your hand as an act of surrender and just say, Jesus, I'm not enjoying this storm. But Jesus, I know that you're in it. And Jesus, it feels like my world's out of control. But Jesus, I'm grateful that you are still in control. So Jesus, move and do what only you can do. And I promise to give you glory for the miracle that you will perform in the days ahead. But in the meantime, I promise to walk forward. Seeing at the top of my lungs, you're still on my boat and I'm with you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you. And we cannot wait to be with you in person soon. But until then, may you know day by day, more and more, this Jesus who's in your boat. God bless.